Welcome to St. Augustine. Are you ready for an epic road trip this summer? Then you should definitely check out St. Augustine, Florida. It's the oldest city in the U.S. and it has so much to offer, which is probably why it was rated as the best small town of the South by Southern Living. Come with me as I explore the historic landmarks, enjoy the beautiful beaches, and taste the delicious cuisine. St. Augustine is perfect destination for anyone who loves history, culture, and a bit of fun. Good afternoon. I'm here in St. Augustine. If you were here in the last video, I told you all about my best road trip tips for the summer along with NHTSA. But now I'm excited to share with you some of the best things to do in St. Augustine. Whether you're traveling solo like me or you're with your group of girls or your family, these are going to be some of the best activities that you can do when you're in St. Augustine to have an epic time in one of America's best small towns to visit. I'm really excited to take you along with me, but first I want to show you a room tour of where I'm staying. And as you can see, I'm located right in the city's main historic center. Check this out. Right here we have the porch, which is so nice and overlooking the main road as you can see. And I'm located right above the Spanish bakery, which is amazing. And here, right in the center of America's oldest city and let me show you inside because I really liked it I also like this guy he's guarding me as a solo female traveler so uh, touch but let's go inside like first we have this magnetic thing to keep the mosquitoes out definitely nice so you can enjoy the indoors and outdoors but this is the main living space and then we have a full kitchen Kerrig machine and some coffee and a fridge, microwave, and then the room. And then the bathroom. So I found this rental through see america tours and they also have a key to the city scavenger hunt that i'm definitely going to check out as well and you can do it on your own there's no tour guide needed and it's just another fun activity you can do when you're in saint augustine for now i'm going to just get ready because i'm about to go on pastime tours where i'm going to take a pretty cool ride around the city to get some history about St. Augustine. But for now, I'm gonna grab a bite. It was time to meet pastime tours at Avila Street, the oldest street in America, and we were riding inside. And I'm starting to take a real one right now and convert it to electric. That way I can use Ford's original parts, but yet still look at the future that way. So you are building these and- This one actually originally came out of China. Okay. So to give you a, a background on myself, I came here just under 18 years ago, got off for gas, and fell in love with the city. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what still brings me today, a passion mm -hmm. for the city itself. This is an amazing place. Mm -hmm. um, I was a thoroughbred jockey when I was young, so when I saw the horses on the street, that was a, oh, I gotta do it, mm -hmm. you know? And I'd learned the history through that. Um, from there, in order not to become stagnant, you study more, mm -hmm. you have a passion for something. Mm -hmm. So, in the course of 18 years, I've discovered so much, not only for the history of it, mm -hmm. but what it is today. The me and actually said, Dad, we should be doing this stuff for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's when I said, well, I can't get a horse and carriage in the city, mm -hmm. but I can start a horseless carriage. Ah. <laughs> and it was part of history that I used to my favor to give you something that was more attractive than, let's say, just your trolley or your mm -hmm. golf cart, but it was something more aesthetic that way. So with that, I realized that it was as simple as not replacing a vehicle, but merely replacing the, the power plant of it. Mm -hmm. So all your transmissions, all your wheels, everything stays original, except for the engine. Make it look. And I have, mm -hmm. with the help of uh, some very good friends, all the machine shops and the old 40 lays and all that stuff mm -hmm. to manufacture and produce the adapters to make that happen. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really. 
really. Mm -hmm. And that's really where my passion is. I love tourism now. Yeah. You know, I love meeting people from all over the world that we have here. Mm -hmm. The city has roughly uh, six to ten million visitors. Mm -hmm. And what you feel or anyone that comes here, and the things that I really like to point out is what kind of an environment you're in today. Mm -hmm. Right? Clean and crime free with all those visitors. As you look around, you're not going to see much in the way of trash here. Mm -hmm. You guys are very, like, very clean. Um, are in St. Augustine. You know, say. we're really growing because Florida right now is the biggest boom state in the nation. People are leaving everywhere to come. Mm -hmm. Right? St. John's County that we're in is the biggest boom in the state. Oh, wow. So St. John's County actually has and has had for the last 10 years one of the top 10 public school systems in the nation. All this stuff here, it's not a wonder they're not coming. So he builds the Methodist and the Baptist Church at the same time in 1887. That's something that's really neat about this city. All these really old churches are still at. Oh wow. That so, bell tower out there? Yeah. One solid piece of red terracotta clay. It took 100 men and 40 oxen by rope and pulley to put all that into place. Wow. I know, it's incredible. The only one that gave me children. Mm -hmm. Then came Flagler. He died at the age of 83 in 1913. So back then, that was a really long lifetime, like hundreds, you know. Mm -hmm. The Ford tomb is empty. It was for his son, Harry. Harry, yeah, Harry Flagler. He, many people don't even know, but it's because I've learned all this stuff. Of yeah. Course. Um, Harry Flagler, I really, really, really admire. You know, he, he's given a violin basically at the age of 12 and falls in love with music. Now, I teach every kid that gets in here to reach the bar so high they'll never be able to reach it. Mm -hmm. So that you find your potential. And all you have to do is believe in yourself and follow your own dreams and you'll find things in your life that you never thought would happen. Well... When he started getting better, I'm sure his dad recognized his talents and he allowed him to play in the parlor for guests. But as he continued to practice, he kept telling him, look, it's a, it's a hobby, mm -hmm. not a career. You're going to take over the Standard Oil Company. You're going to be one of the richest men in the world like your dad, not a musician. Mm -hmm. Later, he became one of the co-founders of the New York Philharmonic. We all have it. We just have to go for it, mm -hmm. you know, and not listen to what others think is right for us you, you know what's right for you mm -hmm. right so just be diligent yeah work hard <laughs> believe in yourself yeah and before you know it mm -hmm. you'll be able to accomplish things you never thought you could liberal art began as an all-girls school in the early 1960s today it's co-ed but what's really neat are the poems that the ground see how the trees are paired up in twos yeah it's a croquet course Oh, with it, where the rich ladies used to socialize. Pastime Tours History Tour was definitely a great way to kick off my adventure in St. Augustine, but now it was time to take a culinary adventure where I took a tour with the tasting tours that blended the history of the city with its food. They had to go in and do that preservation tour. Really? And this talks a little bit about the Espinosa Sanchez house. So I have a little gift and a lot of our places like Bovine is one and there's one down here, the Drunken Horse. Any of our venues, you get a discount, a um, oh, little 10% so discount. And I don't know why there's a hair on there. So right now on the tasting tour, and it's so amazing. They have an awesome location for events at the top of one of the highest towers in historic St. Augustine. And they take you around on a cute electric vehicle. Hi. Oh, thank you. And then there's uh, sprinkled in some hibiscus flowers. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> some hibiscus tea. Mm. So we yeah. And then try it some oregano. We do make all these blends. Glass. What is up with the chains? Okay, that, that is another part of the historical defense here. They would actually tie the oxen to these, uh, I can't think of the right word for it, but this, this, these spikes and chains, and 
they would have it draped in the water. Mm. And when the enemy would come along, they would have the oxen pull on either, like pull apart. And uh. then and then it would pull the underside, yeah. it tear up the underside. The tasting tours has an amazing location at the top of the treasury, but we got to even go eat at some fine dining establishments, like the old City House Inn and Restaurant, which used to be Henry Flagger's Carriage House. Jessica, our guide, was so knowledgeable, and the presentation at a lot of the locations was just phenomenal. The next restaurant we went to was Athena Restaurant, where we learned more about the Minorcan history of St. Augustine and got to try some Saganaki. Okay. It's coffee. That's what we always say about Kenyan coffee. But Ken, she told me, she's like, no, coffee was for export. We didn't drink it. Interesting. Wow. We drank tea. Because and I was, was like, more expensive what? for the coffee to go out. Right. So huh. she, they could make more money that way. Yeah. But here's the thing, and it grew well. You know, it grew, grows very well there. So she comes over to America and she's like, oh my God, these Americans, they drink everything. She could give back to her village more than what they would normally get from distributors and from other coffee growers and farmers. So what she decided to do was sell their coffee and give them back 10% of everything they grew, which they would only get like maybe one to 2%. So she put in fresh wells in her village. She put in a dialysis machine because they don't have clean water in a lot of places. So she gives them the opportunity to have clean water. Purity. After a epic day exploring the city of St. Augustine, I headed to meet Sea America Tours at the Florida restaurant before having an early night for an early morning. Good morning from St. Augustine. I just woke up here and I luckily am above one of these buildings over here with an amazing vacation home rental. But it's so cool because when you get to sleep here in one of these Airbnbs, you literally have the place yourself in the morning because this place gets super busy, especially in the summer when kids are on their school breaks. But I think it's even interesting as like an adult. I love coming here. There is the oldest schoolhouse in the USA uh, is here in Florida. Who would have known? And it was this oldest wooden schoolhouse that helped this community grow and there's so many first things that happen in St. Augustine. It is the oldest city in the United States so it's definitely worth coming to see if you are in Florida and definitely should be added to your itinerary. I know I've done a video on Jacksonville and I definitely think this is not that far away and you should come visit St. Augustine. All right, guys, so we are here in front of the Castello de San Marcos. It is the oldest Spanish fortification in the continental U.S. It may resemble what you see when you go to Cartagena and also to Puerto Rico. And it is a part of the National Park Service. So if you have the National Park Pass, it is covered for you to enter. Right now, it's, I'm going to go another day. But since I was just walking around Old Town St. Augustine this morning, I wanted to come here while nobody was here to show you what it looks like. It is the oldest stone masonry fortification in the United States. It was built in 1672 by the Spanish. It was here to defend the Atlantic trade routes and also against the counterparts of the British in the north who the Spanish did not like. And this is a place of over 450 years of a cultural intersection. It was owned by the Spanish and to the British and it got back in the hands of the Spanish and then it became the United States. There was a lot of history here in Florida that I feel like a lot of people forget because everybody's always like, um, Florida so new, there's not much history in Florida to see, it's all Disney. But when you come to St. Augustine, this is a theme park of knowledge, history, and it was the oldest city in North America. It's nuts. It's older than Jamestown and it's older than Plymouth and the settlement that was built there so I definitely think it's worth it when you come to St. Augustine to learn about this history and yeah you will be definitely impressed I know I am. Here 
here you're going to see what they call coquina, which is the way they built these forts here and many of the buildings in St. Augustine. And they used coquina, which was basically made out of shell fishes to cement together blocks like this to build fortifications like that. So I don't know about you, but I think it's nice to come to a place sometimes when nobody's here so you could really hear yourself think and enjoy the views and the place without a bunch of people here. And that's what I did today before the morning and before it starts at 9 a.m. You can come here, it's like 8.20 in the morning and I have that place almost all to myself. And you can watch a drawbridge open and just walk around. There's some uh, places you can read about the fort as well but I'm gonna go into this later but I have to prepare for a kayaking trip now and I need to get some breakfast because I'm hungry I ate at the Floridian and I had the brisket tacos which was amazing and yeah they have such a nice courtyard too you can see it here check it out it is a hot one I still have not eaten anything yet so I'm heading to Relampago coffee shop because it looks super cute. And as the light startled our eyes, we let go of disguise. Okay guys, so I'm at the Lumbago, probably pronouncing that wrong, and I just got this uh, almond berry bar and a cold brew. So I'm gonna need the energy. I'm going to go kayaking this all run and hopefully seeing a lot of dolphins. But for now, I'm gonna try to play this. She said it's good. And it was only a dollar in a bag. Hmm. Very moist. I love it. Thumbs up to Rel Bago Coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I took the rest of my coffee to go. The cold brew is really, really good. And now I'm heading, for, almost like that one, but heading back to change, because we're going kayaking the salt run. I'm so excited with Kayak St. Augustine, and I think it's gonna be good. And hopefully we see some dolphins and other wildlife. It's really, I think it's bordering the Anastasia State Park. And yeah, hopefully we see some cool wildlife. So now just heading to the salt run and to meet Kayak St. Augustine, change and ready to go hit the road again. Agents of the other, beyond gravel, beyond I took a short 15 minute ride from the Historic Center to meet Kayak St. Augustine, which was close by to the lighthouse. with Kayak St. Augustine and we're paddling through the salt run. The guy's telling me you see osprey, you can see sometimes sharks, uh, but that's very rare, and dolphins. So I'm hoping to see some dolphins today in the salt run. Let's cross our fingers. So we have an Atlantic spoonbill, the pink bird and a lot of cool wildlife. The old lighthouse is at the base of that white flag right there. Alrighty, so we were just pulling back in and while we didn't see any dolphins, it still was really relaxing to get out on the water here in St. Augustine. Who knows, maybe between now and here, we will see some dolphins. That was a hot one, but it was really fun to go kayak with Kayak St. Augustine. Didn't see any dolphins, but you can't control nature, but I definitely suggest you check it out yourself. Guys, so I'm about to do another fun adventure, and that's gonna be the Tiki boat tour right now on these things. So cool. I always wanted to go on one. Now I'll finally be able to do it. Cruise and Tiki Tour is definitely awesome. It's BYOB and I brought my own coffee, but you could see so much wildlife and it was just definitely good vibes. Oh, 
Oh, oh. If you're gonna do the St. Augustine Tiki Cruise, then it meets right in front of the dock right here at Beaches in Volana Beach, not far from downtown St. Augustine. So it was really fun, but I've been out in the sun all day. I need to go somewhere and relax. Okay guys, so I just was walking along the main street, St. George's Street, and I found the Bull and Crown Public House, so I thought I'd go in here, it looks pretty nice. And let's go check it out for dinner. Okay, so so far the fries here are so good. I'm at the public house, Bull and Crown Public House, and I got the chicken sandwich. So yummy looking and yeah. I guess there's some live music tonight later on at a place called Stoics, so we might go check that out as well. But for now, I'm gonna dig in because this looks fire. We got time on our side, we're in a state of hope. I need you on my fire. I want you to know that every time you're away, I long for you so much I can find my way. I'm here at Raga Beans and they have a coffee shop. They have an ice cream place right behind me. And they have one of the sickest locations in Florida, I think, for anything like this. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. And it's so cool, check it out. You can just grab your food here and then eat over here. They also have a cooler for water, beers, and then you have this amazing view. Okay, so Fort Matanz is part of the National Park Service. And they said, well, the boats are full for today. I could come to the beach and you can see the fort right over here. Wow, that is so cool. And these are the National Park boats that take people out nice white sand beach here which is super cool wow nice beautiful day okay so one thing I've never done is go to the lighthouse here in St. Augustine and it's actually the oldest brick structure in like all of St. Augustine I'm pretty sure so here we are So we are here inside the lighthouse grounds. It costs $14.95 for adults, and you have to actually be 44 inches or taller, so they do measure kids when they're small because they don't want them to fall through the railings. Oh, this is so cool. And then up we go. Oh no, okay. Have you heard of ghosts here? <laughs> it's supposedly haunted. I... Yeah. You heard it here. The lady said she, her friend saw her ghost. But this is the lighthouse here. Huh? Well, it's 219 steps to the top, 14 stories high. basically the tallest structure in all of St. Augustine as you can see. We can see it all the way to the Bridge of the Lions, the historic center of St. Augustine, and over here the Salt Run where I did the kayaking yesterday which was amazing. Kayak St. Augustine and A1A where I just drove down from marine land and it's so beautiful here. Oh my god. So in 1874, it said that they had to lift this bucket, which is 20 pounds, quite heavy, 
full of oil up to the top of the lighthouse to keep it lit in 1874. That was definitely no easy thing. And it even said a woman who took over, I think, from the second like housekeeper ever of St. Augustine Lighthouse. She ended up doing it herself after he passed away and made only $400 a year. That's nice. This was a lighthouse keeper and assistant lighthouse keepers uh, duplex. And their kitchens were actually outside on the side of the house. I like to keep it cool. Let's check this out. Hopefully it's air conditioned nowadays. Ooh, yes it is. The St. Augustine Lighthouse actually had a lot more than I expected. They had a museum that taught a lot about the history of the people who ran the lighthouses and they had a little cafe as well. Now back to St. Augustine downtown. Let's go. So I'm here at the Lightner Museum and they actually have a historic cafe that's super cool. Let's go inside and check it out. Here you can see we're here at the Alcazar Cafe which is located in a really interesting place. It is located in the one of the oldest pools in America that was built by Paula Aguilar and you can see it here right now. Definitely an interesting place to dine. Very classy. I don't feel like I'm dressed up for this. But it's located in the Leitner Museum which is an art museum here. Pretty cool too when you're here at the cafe you can check out on this floor some pictures by William Henry Jackson and old photos of basically St. Augustine. After a little break, I decided to check out the old school house museum, which is right there. Whoa. This is so cool. Open the classroom. She said press the white button. Well, well, good to see you. Welcome to the old school and to the mid-1800s. So this is interesting. This is the oldest wooden structure in all of St. Augustine. And here is where the bad students would be put under the stairwell in the dungeon, they called it. And this also would be where they would live above and the teacher and his wife. So yeah, it's definitely quite interesting different way of living. Hey guys, so I'm here at the Fountain of Youth. I'm turning 31, so I thought why not go see what Ponce de Leon found when he came here and labeled it the Fountain of Youth. But first, let's go see this archaeological site. All right guys, 15 acre archaeological park and first stop, the Fountain of Youth. Wow. Let's see if this works. Wow. Thank you. So this is where you can drink from the Fountain of Youth? Yep, yep. Water's <laughs> down at the bottom of the stairs. What? The dispenser's at the bottom step. Yep. As in honor of turning 31 soon, at the end of my year 30, I'm going to drink from the Fountain of Youth. All right. Let's see what this tastes like. I have a feeling it's going to taste like sulfur. I smell sulfur. Maybe more, any more. All right, this smells interesting. Ugh, that was a big cup of it. It tastes like, I don't know, it's sulfur or something. Ugh. Maybe it'll shave some ears off me. Hey okay, guys, so I did it. I tasted the artisanal water of the spring and it is really, really interesting. It's sulfur, like it tastes like sulfur. It has 30 minerals and it pretty much tastes as you would have tasted it back in the day when Ponce de Leon arrived here to what was later named La Florida. He came with three small ships in April of 1513. They landed close by to here and discovered this natural spring, like we have a lot of them in Florida. And yeah, it's pretty cool that today you can come here and see 
this archaeological park and learn more about the founding of Florida. Of course, natives were already here, but yeah, definitely interesting. So the Coquina Cross from 1513. People of yesteryear have come here like Helen Keller and Amelia Earhart. So cool. Just went to the planetarium, which was cool to see what the nighttime sky looked like when uh, Ponce de Leon was sailing here. And then it was interesting to learn how they navigated back then as well. Now this is the Timit Kuan Indian Burial Grounds to teach you a little bit about that as well. So I legit thought this was just the Fountain Youth, but they have a lot of different things here, like trying to teach people about the life in Timit Kuan villages and show you a burial ground and archaeological site. And it's pretty massive as well. And yeah, when you come here, you can also see across this waterway this giant cross and that symbolizes where they believe the ships ran aground um, over there, which is pretty cool. This is where the beginning of Florida and like a lot of the United States occurred. There is a life I lead in this city Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by doesn't make it easy. After going on the second voyage with Columbus to Puerto Rico, decided to come find the Fountain of Youth, Bimini and the Fountain of Youth. And he found Florida. And he spotted the land on Easter Sunday, and then they came and made landfall here on April 3rd. And now you can come and see what it's turned into and see one of the most historic towns in the United States, which I think is pretty cool. And there's so much history here. And yeah, so many things to do, honestly. I definitely will be back, probably maybe even later this summer. But I've just had such an amazing time, but a lot of things do close here earlier, so be sure to wake up early and plan your day accordingly. So our last night here in St. Augustine, I'm so excited though. We're going on a ghost tour and it's meeting right in the courtyard of the Salcedo house. So let's go in and check it out. I think I see them all dressed up. The Night Watchman ghost tour was my first ghost tour in a while, but I really loved how they got into the act of it all and made it a multi-sensory experience. Medium, so I will be channeling Maya from the 17th century. And she'll be coming in to be your tour guide tonight. To a church. Your graveyard will just be a public burial ground. So, as this one was open, they On this tour, if you want to learn about paranormal activity as well as a little bit of history as well, and maybe you'll even see a ghost in one of your photos. We take a look at this house right here. This is a perfect example of what a single room Spanish home would have been like. Nice and small. Now, they chose a lot of the time single rooms because. Lo and behold, your Spanish taxed you per room you had. So instead of closets, they after a very long day of exploring, I'm back in my Airbnb and I got this thing from the taco shop called a UFO. It's like a circular burrito with this crunchy interior. I'm gonna bite into it now. Oh wow. Highly recommend this, especially if you're hungry like me. Good morning, last morning of this trip, but I'm definitely coming back to St. Augustine and the beaches here are amazing. But yeah, I need to go get some coffee and we'll be posting a YouTube video. And that's a reminder, if you aren't already, then please subscribe to my channel, it helps support, it's free to do. And also, if you like this video, then please hit the thumbs up. And let me know if you have any questions, as always, I'll be happy to answer them. Cucavera, which is another local shop, and I got the honey nut latte. Mmm. Oh my god, so good. And this is an Australian coffee shop, and they also have Aussie pies. And it's unique because it's located in the like old treasury building, which has it separated between two sections. So we have the area you can sit in, or you can hang out outside and watch the world go by. Or, and order your coffee in there. And this is the treasury where I met up with the tasting tours tour. And I love this because if it's cool out, you can totally sit here and just enjoy the views. 
And by enjoy the views, I mean the hot firemen that were practicing putting up their ladders. But I was getting a little hungrier, so I headed to Schmiegel's Bagels, which I heard had one of the meanest breakfast sandwiches. Hey guys, so I was recommended to come to Schmiegel's Bagels, and we we're here, and I got this jalapeno cheddar bagel with egg and cheese, and it sounds super delicious. They pack it up to go for you, but they have this nice little area and they sell till one or till they're sold out. And the last few days I've seen them be totally sold out. So I knew I had to come early in the morning and hopefully it's good. Let's try it. Yum with scallion cream cheese. Trying this jalapeno cheddar uh, egg and cheese sandwich with scallion cream cheese. Mm. Before I hit the road back to Orlando, I knew I had to go to the Flyweller College, which was the former Hotel Ponce de Leon, and take the history tour here. Now we have over 30 majors, 49 minors, and one master's in depth education. All of this is pretty much thanks to one man named Mr. Lawrence Lewis Jr. and he came to Wade Matthew. He opened up to college. All right, you guys want to head towards the center of our room and take a seat, please. This was the third wife of Henry Flagler. He had three wives, two of which one passed away and the other was institutionalized in New York. And this is Henry Flagler. So I'm on the tour right now at Flagler College. They have one at 10 a.m. and one at 2 p.m. And a student will take you around and tell you all about the history of Flagler as well as Flagler College, which used to be the Ponce de Leon Hotel. And it is so far so interesting. I love it. And it's so beautiful. Like, and this is the only way you can see this amazing building from the inside. It took 18 months to do That is an incredible feat. That means well, construction 18 months. This is a sundial and a fountain, and there's 12 frogs representing the hours, and then four turtles underneath representing the seasons. And this looks like the hilt of a sword, she was saying, kind of like how the Spanish came here and dug their sword in the ground to claim the land. And the building is built in the Spanish Renaissance style, which is pretty cool, and then there's little odes to the sea. Uh, like little seashells on the building and other things as well and details in the design. Really cool. And then these grotesques up here are dragons that used to have like little red light bulbs in it that Thomas Edison, uh, you know, installed the electric here. And as you can see, as I was telling you, the seashells and the mosaics here are so cool. Let's go back inside, get you tour. There's also a lot of shopping you can do here in St. Augustine, located on St. George's Street, which is really convenient and cool that you don't have to deal with all the traffic in St. Augustine. You can just walk here and then get to the Spanish Colonial Quarter, which is really nice. And yeah, just enjoy a beautiful day in St. Augustine. But my time here is coming to a close. I've done a lot, but I will definitely be back. I had such an awesome road trip coming down to St. Augustine, but now it's sadly time to say goodbye. Okay, so I just checked out. I had an amazing time here in St. Augustine. 
It's gonna be hard to say goodbye to this view of the old historic center. Man, these rocking chairs, definitely lovely in the morning. The sunrise just over there. But it's time to go and head on back to Orlando. I had an amazing time and I got to enjoy my road trip, going to the beaches and hanging out in St. Augustine. But for now, it's time to go and head on back to Orlando. Bye. While I love traveling abroad to far off places, I also love a good road trip even when it's in my home state of Florida. If you like this, then please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss the next adventure. And also let me know if you have any questions about traveling in Florida or St. Augustine.